Another brand new course on the CAO this year in the School of Informatics and Creative Arts is Computing Systems and Operations. This course is so new, it's not even on our prospectus yet. So if you do want details, you can check out the website and we're here to help. You can get in touch with our admissions team and ask any questions you like. So to help all our viewers figure out if this might be the course for them, I'm joined by Stephen Howell from Microsoft. Welcome, Stephen. Hi. I'm curious, um, Computing Systems and Operations, what makes this such a top drawer offering from DKIT? Well, it's one of these new courses which takes a different approach to how we prepare our graduates for the industry that's evolving very quickly. Yeah. So most people, when they study a degree, they come out ready to do a very particular thing and their career is very clear and obvious. They want to be a doctor or a nurse or whatever it is. And when you're studying computing, it can be really hard to know what are you actually going to be doing. So this is one of those courses that gives you a fantastic grounding in all the many different paths you can have as an IT graduate, whether you're working in operations, systems, design, development or deployment. There's so many paths and this is one of these new exciting degrees that gives you the full spectrum of what you need to know to launch yourself into this, you know, hugely growing career. Mm. And so in your opinion, what kind of students should log on to the DKIT website to review this course? Well, it's always really hard to make students aware of these because guidance counsellors and parents often aren't familiar with this uh, industry. And it's a very new industry. Yeah. I mean, when I was doing my Leaving Cert, you could not do the job that I'm doing now because they hadn't invented it yet. And it's the same thing for my kids who are doing the Leaving Cert. They are going to be doing jobs that probably haven't been invented yet. Mm. So the type of student who would be, you know, probably get something that they didn't expect out of a course like this is the type of student who's interested in technology and maybe is interested in a career in computing, but they've heard it's a lot of maths and maybe maths isn't their favorite subject, so they're kind of not going near that. And I would strongly urge any student who's good at problem solving, thinking on their feet, likes to figure out what, what went wrong when something breaks and figure out how to fix it, doesn't matter about your maths, doesn't matter if you hate maths, uh, it doesn't matter if you're a languages type of person, don't be afraid to look at these courses because they really need uh, someone who has a broad spectrum of skills. You're not mm. specialized in one thing, you're not a maths genius, you like getting stuck in and figuring things out and that's the type of student that will really thrive in a course like this. That's amazing and it, it just sounds so interesting to be able to problem solve and not having to love maths or anything like that is is really good. If, is there you know is there a major difference between this course and someone who maybe want to do uh, like a computer science course? Well there are differences but they're very complementary. So traditional computer science would have more of a focus on math skills and maybe it doesn't need to it's just kind of the history of it yeah. it's kind of hard to get away from it we've been doing it that way for so long so you know i went to school in loud m many years ago sadly and i studied the same kind of subjects that most students here in loud are studying and if i was going to apply to dundalk the courses i would be doing if i did computer science would be similar, they'd be updated to the courses yeah. that you know I did many years ago. Whereas these courses are taking a slightly different approach. They're, they're a combination of specializing in an area, but broadening out the focus so mm. that you actually have more career opportunities if you study this. Yeah. So I would say it's complementary. The type of student who might prefer computer science is one who's very interested in app design and development whereas the, the new course is very much on keeping the whole system working. Right. A lot of people, when they click on their phone to watch a video on whatever app it is, they just expect the video to, to be, be there. there. Yeah. And they might think the person who made the video appear there is the app developer. And that's true. Someone mm. had to write the program in the first case. But that's kind of forgetting that there's a whole huge number of people who make the whole internet work. Yes. And we forget about them. And some of those people are from County Loud and mm. are going to DKIT and you don't realize it, but they're kind of making the tech world go around. Yeah. And any student watching this could be one of those too. You don't need to be born with any special tech skills. You don't have to be related to some sort of famous maths genius. This is something that anyone can do. Um, who can do the leaving search, you could do this degree. The difference is not huge. They're mm. complementary, I would say. 
Could you do me a favor and explain what development operation uh, operations is? So we kind of call that DevOps, and it's a term that has emerged because most people think of computing as someone designs the program, someone develops the program, and then we're finished. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's kind of like saying someone designed my car, someone made my car, job done. Yeah. When they don't forget that if I drive that car and I use that car, I'm eventually going to have to bring it to someone to get it fixed. And there's a whole industry of people making sure that the right parts for my car get to my mechanic and the right mechanic knows how to fix it. And that whole industry is kind of invisible. We think about the car designer, not about of course. You know, the office. So DevOps is how do we make sure the internet keeps running? How do we make sure that if something goes wrong, you often hear that uh, there's a certain website and it's not available and everyone's panicking. Oh, I can't get on the website. What happened? And is it just me or is it down yeah. for everyone? And everyone goes to you Twitter. Know, and right? everyone goes to Twitter. And if Twitter's down, <laughs> yeah, we're all in trouble. You know? <laughs> so the thing is, is that the DevOps person is the one making everything work. Mm. Behind the scenes, you know, you never hear about a famous DevOps person. You hear about famous coders, but they're only one small part of it. Yeah. The DevOps people actually are the cogs keeping the whole industry running. If it breaks, they're the ones, the site reliability engineers, mm -hmm. they're the ones going in to figure out what went wrong and how to fix it. They're the ones making sure everything's running smoothly. DevOps is the life cycle of software from someone has an idea to they actually make it, to they deploy it onto the cloud, and all the steps in between, there's many of them, that's DevOps. It's making sure everything runs smoothly. It's it's 10 different jobs in one, and that's why a degree like this prepares you for so many different careers. Even if we give it one big name, it's really lots and lots of different challenges that you need to be able to do. Amazing, well, anyone working in DevOps, well done. <laughs> um, come here, I appreciate you know this is a new offering, um, but what, I suppose, career opportunities could there be with this qualification? Well, when we heard about this degree um, in, in my team and in Microsoft, and I know in lots of other companies, there was excitement because degrees like this are rare. and They recognize that this is a growing career and a growing industry. And, you know, you know if you just imagine, you know, we're one company in Ireland and we have hundreds of jobs, and that's not hyperbole, that there are hundreds yeah. of jobs in DevOps in just one company, and there's lots of companies yeah. interested. So. This is a, a changing industry. Uh, again, five years ago, there probably wasn't a single DevOps job. Now, most jobs have a DevOps requirement in tech. And that's an incredible change. And there will be more changes going forward. I think it's worth uh, thinking about looking to the future. And it's hard when you're 17, 18, picking your degree to look to the future. But a degree like this will set you up for many different careers in many different companies, countries, and it's not going to be restricted to just one or two companies that are local. It could be much bigger than that. Mm. And I think many students will be unaware of that. Many career guidance counselors might look at a degree like this and go, what is it? And I would say, don't be afraid of it. It's really, I think, going to be a launch pad. Companies like us can't wait to hire graduates from courses like yeah. this because they don't really exist right now. Yeah. Um, you're hiring people, old people like me because we've learned it on the job. Imagine if you could hire a graduate who learned it in college, Amazing. in a lovely college that's thinking ahead and creating innovative courses to support the students. Mm. So if I was a student you know, who had a passion uh, to do computing at DKIT, why should I choose this course? I think you have to consider that there are so many opportunities and courses and it's bewildering. I mean, if you just look at the prospectus, there's courses on all sorts of amazing things. It's very hard to figure out which one would be for me. So I would say, you know, you choose a college um, on a lot of criteria. But, you know, I, I would say this because I'm a local, but there's a lot to be said for your local college that treat you not as just another student, you know, but as family where you're learning with the lectures that they're here to help you launch your career. They're not here to make, you know, your life yeah. harder. They're actually here to, to teach you and, and learn with you. And if you imagine that it is possible to go to, you know, a big institution where you're just a number and the lecturer will never learn your name. But I think there's a lot to be said for going to a college where you're part of a family, you're part of a team, you're learning with them, where they engage with industry. And, you know, they've invited me here today 
where a lot of colleges would never do that. And industry can uh, work with you and uh, you can learn with them and you can have that wonderful symbiotic relationship. And not every college can do that. So there's a lot to be said for DKIT being willing to do that uh, engagement because it benefits the students, it benefits the lectures, it benefits the local industry. And, you know, if you're unsure of where to go to college, and I know I have a kid who's picking a uh, college where to go to, there's, uh, it's always worth looking at the prospectus, which they don't produce for fun, you know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of detail in there. When I read the prospectus for colleges, uh, the first thing I did was look at the courses, but also look at the other aspects and it will come through what type of a college it is, what type of ethos and culture it is. And that's important too. It's not just about the lectures you get. Sometimes it's about the experience, the facilities. How it makes you feel. How it makes you feel. Because the people you go to college with and the lectures you meet are going to be the ones that you reach out to when you're you know, an old guy with a white beard like me. And you say, hey, I've known you since we were in college together back in the Stone Age. What, um, you know, how are you getting on? How can we help you? I still meet my lecturers. Uh, and I met one of my lecturers today when I walked into the building. Uh, they were here and they taught me when I was 18. Yeah. And now they're, you know, they're a very important person now. They have a big title now, <laughs> you know. But they were just a lecturer when they taught me. And now uh, they still remember me. And even though that was a long time ago. And that's, that's what a family is. That's what uh, a, a college should be what an institute of technology like DKIT is. I couldn't have said it better myself. I, I, you know, walking down the, the corridors when you're in college and just being able to go, oh, you know, to your lecturers, how are you And he go, oh, hey, Dave, you know, hey, Sebastian. And I love that kind of relationship. I love the way they all know your name and they know your personality and you're not just, you know, a pupil sitting in a pew, basically. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, is there anywhere the parents or students can go? Is there a website maybe that people can go to, to learn more about it, to, to figure out what's on offer? So uh, the challenge of the tech industry has always been that if you go to any of our websites, you'll just be more confused, you know. So um, it's always filled with jargon yeah. and it's, it's bewildering. So I would say DKIT's own website has an excellent write-up on the degree. It makes it, you know, understandable. Right. Uh, I would say that nothing beats an open day, reading a prospectus, meeting the lecturers, chatting to them. If you can uh, avail of that, it's worth doing. If you live too far away, okay, that's not always possible. That's why the prospectus is really good. Uh, you can go online. There are, the college has videos about the type of place it is. So even if you can't visit, you can get a feel for it. So I wouldn't advise going to any specialized websites about DevOps because that might scare you away, but definitely look at the prospectus listing. It's not in the prospectus this degree because it's so new, yeah. but I looked at it today and it's on the computing uh, part of the website Perfect. and um, it's very, very understandable even to a lay person who's not in tech. And the number one question I get from parents who are trying to advise their kid, they keep saying, it's computer science, it's computer science, and it is computer science, but it's one course of about 20. Yeah, There's yeah, a yeah. lot of options here. So look at them all, find what appeals. And if there's anything on that you don't understand, if it's not explained on the website, you can actually get in touch and there will be uh, an email address on the page and they will happily answer any questions you have. Stephen Hell from Microsoft, thank you so much.